Hey everybody, this is Christian Buckley doing another MVP Buzz Chat, and I'm talking today with Yannick. Hello. Hi. <laughs> so for folks that don't know you, who are you, where are you, and what do you do? My name is Yannick Reinhardt. I'm uh, located in Germany. I'm a senior system engineer in the modern device management. And in addition to this, I am also a um, technical lead for an initiative called AIOps. Um, the goal here is to make end-to-end -end analytics with help of machine learning, collecting data, analyze this data, and find for the potential for improvement, become more proactive in, yeah, notice issues in the IT environment and stuff like this. Very cool. So what's covered within the, 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 the modern devices space? I mean, it's, aren't everything that we touch now modern devices? <laughs> <laughs> um, modern devices means um, cloud management of uh, endpoints. Um, our goal is to shift all devices from a traditional management with on-premise uh, resources into cloud using Intune. And I'm working in the special purpose area. The special purpose means everything what is not standard. <laughs> yeah. um, this means special devices which are located in laboratories who has special requirements, special settings, which are near to productions also, um, everything in this yeah, area. It's, you know, it is it is amazing how much that space has evolved and changed. Where it used to be, uh, you know, I remember the days like where you had your company issued laptop and mobile device if they were even permitted uh you know other specialty devices i remember having like a key fob and having to do kind of a separate to, to very securely log in on those devices and to where now i mean you can have that the bring your own device i i, I realize that stuff still exists mm -hmm. the, those a, a lot of those pieces but you now can support um like i use for my work i use my home system yet my company had very strict guidelines on how it should be used and how data should be managed and and they're they, they so they actually do a scan and and review on a regular basis as part of the governance policies to make sure that the environments that i'm using to access their systems are secure and 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 so it's it's uh again it's just a we've come a long way in that space yeah, this is right. I think with um, yeah the power of cloud, you have really new possibilities how you can um, guarantee the security of your data and of your environment. And this opens a lot of new possibilities and doors um, to bring more flexibility, but also keep the whole security. So what was your path to becoming an MVP? So, so I mean, how did, how did you get started in this, in this space and and uh, find out about the program and then get involved. Yeah, I was new in this area of modern device management. And um, what I did is I learned a lot um, at the beginning. And my goal was to share um, my path, my learnings, my, um, yeah, also discovery of functions, what's offered in Intune. And this was the reason why I decided to start blocking. And um, yeah, I had a lot of fun with this blocking and uh, yeah, over time it developed in the direction that I released every week a new blog post and <clears throat> also yeah, tried then different formats to also make YouTube, join communities, um, support here. This was more or less my path, but my initial goal was not to become MVP. It was only to write down what I learned to have a deeper learning with it and also share this with others. I often tell people that my my blog is just an extension of my brain. It's so I can remember the things that I've learned and the conversations that I've had. And so I, I track things the very much the same way. And, and, I, and I'm sure you've probably said this and and believe this, and I've said this many, many times, is that, you know, hey, even if I were, if I stopped being an MVP, I would still be doing exactly the same things. I'd be creating the content, sharing what I've learned, it, you know, surfacing and, 
uh, and amplifying other people's voices out there because it's just part of the way that I work. It's part of the way that I learn and that I share that that information out. And that's kind of a core to being an MVP. But I know a lot of people that are starting out um, are, are like asking that question of like, how how much do I need to do to to pursue a, you know, an MVP? And I don't think that there's a fixed number. Like you can't say, like you said, you started doing like mm -hmm. a weekly post. Is that the right number? Or do I need to do more than that? And I don't know if you've had questions from people of what they can do. What kind of advice do you give them? I think the most important thing is to have fun with the whole thing. Um, when you have fun by creating content to support people, um, then it's the best thing um, what you can do. Um, regarding the time, um, normally I spend the whole Saturday <laughs> in creating content, um, answer questions from the community, um, also working on uh, coding projects and stuff like this. Um, but for sure, you also have conversations um, during the week in the end. You have to spend some time in this topic, but uh, as already mentioned, when you have fun with this, it's not an not a big deal. It it needs to be your your hobby, like it, yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, just thinking of uh, sorry, uh, quoting uh, Mike Myers thing. I I am very much as my wife reminds me. I'm like the uh, uh, Michael Scott of uh, you know type of humor where I will name drop. Um, I think you can't be a, f a fan of the U.S. version of The Office without quoting Michael Scott repeatedly. But um, you know, like, don't blog angry. You know, um, it, so yeah, it needs to be. You need to develop healthy habits that just become part of your persona. And so, exactly. if, you, if you don't enjoy doing that, then this is that kind of time commitment is not for you. And there are some people that say it's like, look, I just don't have the time, you know, to to do that kind of thing. But there's nothing wrong with just participating in the community and mm. not pursuing becoming an MVP. That's fine. Yeah, exactly. Um, I think when you share your experience, your knowledge with someone else, and you know you can help someone, you, you reach uh, someone with your, with your knowledge, it's the best feeling what you can have. And um, yeah, and MVP is a really nice achievement, but the important thing is really that you can help um, other people and share your knowledge. So what are your kind of your big topics right now? What are what are the hot topics that you're writing about and uh, and, and talking about? Um, currently, um, I started a series about the Intune Suite. Uh, there was a release at 1st of uh, March regarding the new features which Intune offers uh, within this Intune Suite. And there are really nice features in. And um, I want to blog about each of this um, yeah, new, new stuff uh, within this um, new release. Yeah, there's a, I, well, I, I'm sure like every other aspect of Microsoft technology that's a full-time job, just keeping up with any one of the product lines. Mm. Yeah. yeah, this is right. Uh, I think the development, uh, it's really amazing how uh, how uh, fast the whole thing is. And if you met, um, yeah, think about how big the whole portfolio from Microsoft is. It's unbelievable how they develop the whole products with this speed. Um, it's really cool. Well, that's another, uh, you know, because it is so complex and there's so many different pieces, there's a lot of somebody that is saying, hey, I'm interested in, uh, you know, in writing about talking about what we're doing within Tune. You can take different perspectives. You can write about, you know, in Tune and, uh, and and things that your company is doing with with Azure, things that you're doing with Microsoft 365, and uh, uh, so you can definitely uh, you know follow kind of the leading voices that are out there and bring your perspective and a differing perspective to the space. So there's always room for more content. Like that, exactly. I, I just always argue that it's not about like there there's the there is just so much content that's out there. Um, but there are always people that are interested in hearing your perspective and your voice. So you can't be, you can't look and say, well, somebody already wrote an article that covered this feature, share your perspective because somebody may not relate to that other writer that may relate to you. 
Yep, this is right. I think it's always good when you um, explain stuff in your own words because your follower, your um, community like your style, how you write blogs. And if you bring this in your own style, I think you can also help some people. But in addition to this, you can also think out of the box. <clears throat> I think Microsoft um, has a really good tool stack with Azure. And also if you combine different services from Microsoft in tune with some services in Azure, you can uh, bring out a lot of uh, new potential. And also this is something uh, what is maybe or is helpful for the community if you um, provide such solution in your, in your posts. Well, that's one of the uh, my favorite things is with like to, for the user group is when there's somebody that is from the user group they've never presented before and they're sharing something that they did at work and it doesn't have to be finished or perfect mm -hmm. um, but saying and here's our approach and here's what we do because one of the benefits is that other people in the audience will be like we did something similar you're probably going to run into this problem here's how we solved it so right there you're already you know uh, um, crowdsourcing the solution that you're developing is going to help you. And then if it is, you know, finished or it is, uh, you know, uh, if, if people might just provide the feedback, that's, that's fantastic. I, you know, haven't seen that before. We're going to go and leverage something. So that's how you start is to go and share, you know, obviously protect sensitive information when you're sharing work related projects. But if you're able to go in and anonymize that and be able to share out what you're doing at work, that is the best way to get started, to write about that or to speak about that. Yeah, absolutely right. Well, very cool. Well, so for so again, if so folks that want to reach out to you, connect with you, what are the best ways to reach you? Um, I'm really active in LinkedIn and on Twitter, but I'm also um, active on the Discord community of Intune, um, also Facebook. I'm more or less spread it through uh, the whole networks. <laughs> but, uh, there, there is so much going on in LinkedIn. Discord. There, there is tons that are out there. That's like the new place for the forums. And there are some fantastic Microsoft communities out on Discord for people that aren't out there yet on that. Yeah, this is right. And uh, uh, Discord provides yeah, cool possibilities to structure the different channels and, and chats. And this is an advantage uh, of this medium. Well, excellent. Well, thanks so much for your time today. And uh, you know, hopefully get to see you at uh, an upcoming, I know MVP Summit is coming up quickly, but I know not a lot of people are going to be able to make it because it's such short notice, but. Um, I will not join the MVP summit in person. I will um, join um, uh, virtually, but I'm on vacation in the summer in US. Yeah. Oh, uh, awesome. Well, enjoy your time and we'll, uh, we'll let you know when this goes live and share it out. Many thanks. <laughs> wow. Wow.